Tampa, the Big East's biggest student section, rowdy and ready for this collision of unbeatens in the Big East Conference. George Selby and USF trying to pierce that pass rush in the face of Tony Pike, the trigger man for Cincinnati. Six foot six, big play, quick strike offense. This could be a showcase game with all the scouts watching tonight as the Bulls try to protect their house. Bearcats and Bulls straight ahead. And welcome to ESPN's College Football Primetime presented by Applebee's. Here in Tampa, big crowd in Raymond James Stadium. The Buccaneers may be winless, but the Bulls are undefeated, ranked number 21, as they welcome in the eighth-ranked undefeated Bearcats of Cincinnati. An enormous game in the Big East Conference and a showcase for both programs. Welcome once again, Chris, Jesse, Craig, Aaron will join us downstairs. Cincinnati got to the Orange Bowl last year. They got a taste of a BCS Bowl game, guys. Quietly, their goal are even bigger this year. They see this as a stepping stone game. They can get to 12 and 0, Craig. They really believe they belong in the conversation for the BCS championship game. Well, Cincinnati and Brian Kelly are now talking about how they want to be one of the big programs, and he wants to win more games so they can have meaningful games against an Ohio State or Notre Dame. This is the kind of game, Jesse, where you got to win. You got the national audience here. Everybody's watching your ball club. But I'm not sold yet on Tony Pike. I mean, for some reason, statistically, he's there, but I'm not sure that he's ready yet. We'll find out how good Tony Pike is tonight. You know, at the start of last season, Tony Pike was fifth on the quarterback depth chart. Fast forward to today, and he's playing like a Heisman Trophy contender. He's extremely efficient. There's a lot to love about his game, but guys, he's going to get tested tonight. This is the best pass rush he's seen all year. USF on defense can get after the quarterback. And what, 25 scouts watching Pike, who's six foot six. Be, this would be a good night for him to show that he's ready. For USF, we've seen this before, frankly. Ranked in the top ten, undefeated big Thursday night game in the conference and then the swoons they haven't been ready for this moment new team new year and the Bulls have a quiet confidence after winning at Florida State and I think confidence too with Jim Levitt I mean yeah. I, don't you sense I do. it I mean the guy really is more comfortable with us he's not as nervous he's <laughs> not running a gasser with us in the meetings I mean he really is out there and he's confident because he's now recruiting players away from LSU Miami Florida so he's getting great players one of them's got to do well tonight it's <laughs> his freshman quarterback <laughs> one of those guys Coach Levitt found was freshman quarterback B.J. Daniels. A few weeks back, starting quarterback Matt Grothy went down with a season-ending knee injury, and a lot of people thought the season for USF was over. B.J. Daniels has now been in the lineup two weeks. He has been lights out. He provides big playability for this offense. First home start both for the freshman. Can he handle the hype? We'll find out tonight. He is a dual threat guy. He can hurt you with his arm or his legs, but how he handles the situation is a big question. Jim and they've been able to feed off the energy of big crowds at night here in Tampa in recent years to beat some big time teams. Cincinnati though not really impressed. They've been on the road already three times this year. One big at Rutgers one up at Oregon State and they are the favorites coming in here tonight. Jim Levitt the only coach this program has known. He really feels comfortable with this year's group. The man who's coaching his defense coach last year for Brian Kelly up at Cincinnati. Kelly is with Aaron Andrews. Chris, thanks, coach. What is key for night tonight for your quarterback, your quick offense, and facing this fifth rank scoring defense? Be who he is. Don't try to be somebody else. You know, you get into this situation, you try to do a little too much. Just calm him down. Let him beat Tony Pike. Tony Pike's pretty good. He doesn't need to be more than that. Some of your players said you haven't gone up against an athletic quarterback like USF's B.J. Daniels. How do you approach him tonight? Well, we know what to expect from him. Um, you know, we went up to a uh, guy named uh, Tyro Taylor from Virginia Tech in the Orange Bowl. So we got a feeling he's a very good quarterback. We got to try to slow him down. All right, thanks. Thank you. All right, Chris. Aaron, thank you. Kelly's team beaten by the Hokies in that Orange Bowl. Steamy. 74% humidity, a chance of rain. There were a few sprinkles earlier in the day. Depth. Stamina could come into play tonight. Oh, absolutely. You know, Cincinnati's been up there in that nice, cool Midwest. Coming down here, but they're focused, and Brian Kelly's got them ready to play. But guys, we're excited for this one. We've been talking about this game now for a couple weeks. It has everything you want in a college football game. Conference ramifications, national title ramifications, even Heisman Trophy ramifications. This has everything you want to watch in a college football game. Sure does, and plenty of bragging rights as well, and a few other subplots we'll get into. Eric Schwartz boots it away, and this is Marty Gilliard, the talented receiver returner for the Bearcats. Breaks a tackle. Gilliard 
still on his feet at the 35 and you see some of his talents he figures to be prominent in the Bearcats offense tonight already seven touchdown receptions from Tony Pike who's six foot six the fifth year senior from right there in Cincinnati uh, you know what but you saw Tony Pike on the sidelines while ago Jesse didn't you see him over there firing everybody up and that's what Brian Kelly's saying don't get too hyped up about this game but this leadership role is new for Tony Pike he came in this season as the starting quarterback he's played great now on the road major test tonight Jacob Ramsey is the back to the right of Pike and he motions out Empty backfield and no blitz. Quick throw, near side incomplete. He was trying to get it to Ramsey. Jerome Murphy was on the coverage. Who are the impact players? Gilliard already. Quite simply put, Marty Gilliard is one of the best receivers in the entire country. He is the big playmaker for the Cincinnati offense. And left tackle, left Lincolnbach, has to play extremely well tonight. One on one against George Selby, one of the best pass rushers in the country. And the Bulls have the ball. Alex Daniels will turn it loose on the pass rush. Already five and a half sacks. Pike on second and ten. Quick release. This one is a catch on the near side by Armand Bins. They're going to try to involve other guys. Gilliard is such a dominant pass catcher. His seven touchdown receptions. The rest of the receivers just have three combined. Well, a lot of defenses this year have decided to double team Marty Gilliard, which means there's going to be opportunities for single coverage for other guys to make plays. Up tempo, Bearcats. Ready on third and two. Fighting for yardage is Ramsey. He doesn't get it. He'll be a yard and a half short. So that quick strike offense did not catch the Bulls defense off guard. And, and you know what? Cincinnati's at the line of scrimmage trying to decide what they're going to do. No question here. They've got a punt. And there's a new level of respect they're going to have, I believe, for this USF front seven, Jesse. They can run. And they can get after the quarterback. This is a big win right off the bat for this USF defense. Getting Cincinnati in that high octane offense off the field in three downs. Jake Rogers is the punter. Baron Horns, a walk-on who showed up the first day of camp and was one of the fastest guys in the field and earned a scholarship. He's a junior college transfer. Takes it at the eight. And to get the corner spun out at about the 11 yard line. So Daniels have to be careful. Not very good field position for the Bulls first possession. 48 yard punt just three yards on the return. Daniels the guy who comes from Tallahassee you may know the story not recruited as a quarterback by Florida State. How would he handle the hype at Doe Campbell Stadium going in there fresh off the injury to Matt Grothy the four year starter and he made big plays with his legs and his arm to beat the Knowles. He's massive. He's already been involved in the three longest pass plays for this USF offense this year. He presents big strike opportunities. Mo Plancher, part of the tailback rotation for the Bulls. They fake it to him. Daniels throws on first down. Has a completion to Carlton Mitchell, who makes a man miss and fights for first down yardage. He'll be just short. Impact players for the Bulls. They already saw Mitchell involved. And Mitchell is the home run threat for this USF offense. He's already been involved in five of the team's ten longest plays on offense this year. And I mentioned Selvi on the other side. The other bookend, Jason Pierre-Paul. He will be double teamed tonight. He must, though, continue to be a bookend. Allen's a very good safety, the top tackler, and a very good special teams player. Here's a handoff up the middle and short gain for Plancher. J.K. Schaefer on the stop. And a little bit of a tussle here. You can see already the intensity of this football game. Both sides really fired up, ready to go. And you know what? Jim Levitt was saying, the Big East, we hope to show on national television Thursday night that it'll hit you in the mouth. They, and, and Jim was really good about that, Chris. He's was about that about that? This is a physical conference. Absolutely. If nothing else, it'll hit you in the mouth. Well, it wasn't that long ago that people were questioning the Big East. I think they still are in some fronts, but don't, don't question the physical nature of this conference. Third and six. But the illegal substitution penalty just changing the entire complexion of this opening series. Daniels in the pocket now steps up and flips it far side and over the head of Plancher had his hands on it. So again, the penalty kills the drive three and out. B.J. Daniels showing you he's a little bit excited right now. We talked about he's a freshman, first home game, a lot of hype, a lot of pressure. It's a big showdown. He's got to just calm down. It's so critical he's able to stay within the system tonight. Better start than the last game against Syracuse when USF fumbled in their first two offensive plays in the dome. Able to get out of there with a win. 
Delbert Alvarado, the veteran punter, to boot it away, and it's a short kick. Very short, bouncing in the Bulls' side of the field. And it'll roll dead about the 47. So the exchange of punts benefits the Bearcats, and Pike will have the ball in plus territory after the 32 yard boot. Possession two for Pike and the Bearcats coming up. Bearcats take over at the 46 after the poor punt by Alvarado. And first and 15, there's a delayed handoff. Heed gets back about four of the yards. Brian Kelly fired Joe Tracy as defensive coordinator in February after signing day. And Tracy, after a long interview process, landed the job down here. So he's been busy in the buildup to this game, visiting with his staff members of USF, giving the personnel rundown on the Bearcats. They're hoping it's a big edge tonight. They fake it to Pete. Pike fires far side, wide open. Marty Gilliard at the 25-yard line. How did the leading receiver on this team get so open, 22 yards? We talked to Brian Kelly about Marty Gilliard. He said last year, he set a school record, well over 1,200 yards receiving, but he had a lot of yards on screen passes. This year, he's doing a lot better in comeback routes and in routes downfield. Do you see how hard Gilliard drove off the corner? That's why the corner turned his hips and started running to the end zone. Nice job of selling the deep ball. Empty backfield, five receivers. Pike immediately under pressure. That was Jason Pierre-Paul, the Haitian sensation, the, the bookend counterpart to George Selby. It's the first time in George Selby's career at USF he's had a player opposite him be very productive. And this guy's a freak physically. <laughs> well, so what that means is Cincinnati's offense tonight, their best blockers on their left side, their left tackle, he'll go one-on-one -on -one with Selby. There'll be double teams on the other side tonight. So can... He maintained that bookend over there and stay with him. You see that wingspan, 81 inches? The guy can do a backflip in football pads, huh? What? Right. There's a screen inside. This is Pede breaking a couple tackles, takes a big hit just short of the first down marker. This is one of the things I really like about Cincinnati's offense. Tony Pike does not hold on to the football very long. He's able to distribute it, and these guys do a great job run after catch. Uh, you know, and that's so important in this offense because it's the short dink and dunks many times. It's quick timing, and it will be quick tonight because of that fast defensive line. Another third and short for the Bearcats. Pede. Stretched out and dropped for a loss. Deion Wilson, the senior middle linebacker, the leader of that defense, with help from the freshman Webster. Again, getting a great example of this speed and the defender's ability to run sideline to sideline. Watch over here. Watch the push Jason Pierre Paul does here. Watch the push in the backfield. Controls his guy, comes off, outside, spreads, pushes the ball, makes the runner bend and bow. That's twice they failed on third and two. Sets up a 37-yard field goal attempt for Jake Rogers. He's just two of three this season. The Bearcats usually get in the end zone, rarely have to settle for field goals. They do in this case. So the Bearcats strike first. Daniels and the Bulls back to work after this. Tampa really starting to buy into the USF Bulls. It's a big campus. There's 47,000 students, ninth biggest in the country. But those were the humble beginnings of the football program. They called it the Ponderosa. Headquartered out of trailers out there in the practice field that's since been replaced by a beautiful facility. It's amazing to think what Jim Levitt was able to do here at this program. Take it from the Ponderosa and those shacks they had <laughs> to a big contender in the Big East and, and, and a ranked team. And now Tampa, the city, is really starting to embrace this program. You know, you see it tonight. The fans showing up, giving them an atmosphere. Giving a winner uh, as opposed to the, the pro franchise yeah. that shares the stadium. <laughs> Theo Wilson, Dontavia Bogan are back on the bounce, on the re-kick. Mrs. Bogan bobbles it momentarily at the five. Gets the corner. And tight ropes out near the 40-yard line. So that little five-yard penalty in the Bearcats proves costly as now the Bulls will have good field position after the 37-yard return. Yeah. And I'd like to pay off this report now on the grass, though. You know, you're going to see both teams out here playing on the same field, and they do this routinely in this stadium. But the kickoff return, it always, what is the penalty, five yards? No, it's a lot more than that. Absolutely. Dontavia Bogan able to take advantage of that. So many weapons at wide receiver from USF, and they really help them out in the return game. It takes a while, right, for the roots in the grass to set in to make it a more stable surface. You can't do that yeah. in two, three days, right? No, no. <laughs> this is Mike Ford, the junior tailback. And he hands it straight ahead for about three. They'll rotate the backs. 
Ford, a guy originally signed with Alabama, comes from Sarasota. When he's healthy, he's been a quality back, but he's been off injured. All right, let's, now let's set the stage now. Tonight, we're watching the Big East national TV, right? Platform number 18. They got another team that's 21. The question we're going to watch tonight and talk about, if an undefeated Big East team goes on, should they play for the national championship if they're the only unbeaten out there outside of maybe an undefeated SEC team? Right? All right, so your scenario is there's two undefeated teams and a Big East champ is one of them. Yes. All right, we'll chew on that for a sec. Low snap handled by Daniels. Fires across the middle. It's complete. And battling near the first down is the true freshman, Sterling Griffin. He's the guy that had that big touchdown catch against the Seminoles for 73 yards. Jesse, if you're a quarterback out there and you only rush three players and you put eight into the secondary, shouldn't you cover them? You should. And hit what B.J. Daniels does. He does a nice job just keeping the play alive, but notice how his eyes stay downfield. It's only a matter of time until one of his receivers slides into the open part of the zone and the freshman quarterback able to deliver. So it's this time, no blitz and a strike over the middle to Hester. Jesse Hester to the house. Twenty eight yards and welcome back to the fold Jesse Hester he had a foot he had a hamstring hasn't been in the mix until tonight and what a huge guy to have back he was going to make plays tonight in the slot that's a part of the offense that this USF team has been lacking in terms of production Jesse Hester's back and he makes a big impact his first career touchdown was a part of an enormous USF win at Auburn in overtime. Uh, you're going to see Hester here when you get to the secondary there's a lot of pressure that's going to be put outside when they get to the secondary Jesse watch the linebacker level nobody's in the middle of the football field and it's a nice job by Jesse Hester just understanding the soft spot reaching in behind that linebacker providing a target for his quarterback USF had four completions coming into this game from the slot position to the boundary Gilliard takes the short kick off at the nine and Marty able to spin forward to the 25. Marty Gilliard. Mike looking right, floats it out on the sidelines, and it's complete. Second catch for Benz. 12 yards in the first down. There are 25 different scouts here in attendance tonight. That's a lot for a Thursday night game. Five personnel directors here. Wow. And a lot of those guys are here to watch Tony Pike make that kind of throw. He has all, the, he can do he has all the tools. I think he's going to show that he can make every throw on the football field. Mel Kuyper, Todd Michel, some of the guys have Pike ranked top two or three senior quarterback prospects for the draft. Steps up, floats it across the middle, off the receiver's hand, and incomplete. D.J. Woods in a crossing route. Not a very accurate throw there. Now, you know, I, I, exactly. You know what? This is one of those throws you've got to make. You know, the touch, it's right there. Just step, he did step up nicely. D defensive end, Jason Pierre-Paul, got a great jump at, off the ball, forced Tony Pike to step up, and that disturbed his rhythm a little bit while he was looking downfield. Bulls show pressure. Here comes the noise with five on the play clock. Pressure up the middle. Pike sidesteps, floats it near side, and it's incomplete. Going up for the ball was Ben Gadouli, the tight end, but he was well covered. One thing the USF Bulls wanted to get accomplished tonight, they want to challenge the wide receivers, be physical, but they want to really get after Tony Pike. They want to show him a pressure that he has not yet seen. Now, Chris Robinson provided that pressure, getting up in there hard and fast, and the rhythm not there for Tony Pike. Robinson, a childhood friend of Marty Gilliard. They grew up together in Bunnell, Florida, not too far from Tampa. Cincinnati 0 for 3 so far on third down. They need 10. Pike lobs it downfield over the head of Woods. 
Quentin Washington was right there anyway. If you're pitting Brian Kelly versus defensive coordinator Joe Tracy, Joe Tracy is winning right now. His schemes are confusing Tony Pike. They're finding ways to get pressure on the opposing quarterback. And that time they only came with four, you know, and they kept him in the pocket, and he still couldn't deliver the ball because of the secondary coverage. Yeah, and coaches tell us stuff. It's another game. It's part of the profession. <laughs> B. Yes. <laughs> Very personal tonight. When you, when you get fired by a head coach as a defensive coordinator, you land at a rival school. Yeah. And Kelly, known for offense, this is personal tonight. Horns trying to make something happen. He gets out across the 20 yard line. You can tell he's a dangerous returner. First down, Plancher has a crease. And Mo Plancher barrels across the 35 yard line. These are both teams that already have a conference road win under the right. belt. All right, Fowler, watch this. Is this deceptive or what? You take your left guard and your left tackle and you pull them and you come around this way, you think the ball's going that direction, right? Mo Plancher has been a great story. 2006, he's the starter. He gets a knee injury. It slows him down all the way through till last year. He gets another elbow injury. This is the first time he's been healthy his entire career. He's got the ball again. Nope, Daniels keeps it. Nice fake. And B.J. Daniels is in the clear. Aaron Webster finally dragged him down. Carlton Mitchell, the receiver, threw a nice block. It had a lot of folks fooled, but that's fake, though. All right, Chris, watch this one here. The right guard and the right tackle this time. They're going to pull. They're coming this way, and the quarterback's going to keep it, Jesse, and he follows them. Cincinnati has yet to see a running quarterback this year. This is a new element that they have to contend with on the other side of the football. B.J. Daniels brings that ability to USF. Nothing for Lamar, 165-pounder wrapped up for a one-yard loss. One thing the Cincinnati Bearcat defense can do, they can run as well. They lead the country right now. They average 10 tackles per loss per game. Final 10 seconds of the first quarter. Bearcats struck first after a short punt. Field goal. Daniels answered despite some penalties, a couple of big passes. 7-3 for Levitt's home underdogs after the first quarter. 7-3, the quarter dominated by the Bulls. They've had the majority of the possession. They've been 46 yards to Cincinnati's 55. Second and 11 now from the UC 40-yard line. Lindsey Lamar, the speedy freshman, in the slot for Daniels. Fires down the middle. Intercepted. It was picked off by Aaron Webster. The experienced free safety still running. Aaron Webster in the USF territory. Blockers. And down inside the five. So a huge momentum switching play. And the third pickoff already this year for Webster. Bearcat secondary does it again. You know, we're sitting here, Jesse. We see this now. B.J. Daniels, the young man, makes a mistake. He forces the ball down the field. You're going to see on the right side of your screen coming to the middle, 87, let the ball go. He's got, see that? He didn't, so he forces it, and he pays the price. One thing offensive coordinator Mike Canales told us about B.J. Daniels is that sometimes he looks for too much. He has to just stay within the scheme, stay poised, take what the defense gives you. The only returning starter on this defense from a year ago, Webster with the 82-yard return to set up Pike first and goal from the three. Jacob Ramsey in the backfield. Pike fires. It's a touchdown. Going up for it is Bins. And Bins beat Jerome Murphy just like that. Cincinnati jumps on top, an instant Cashing in of the pick. You give Cincinnati's offense opportunities by making mistakes. It does not take them very long to capitalize on. That was a perfectly thrown football by Tony Pike. Second touchdown of the year for Benz. Cincinnati very efficient. You know, points off turnovers. They came in plus 42 at six in the country. Daniels makes his first real mistake tonight. Webster makes him pay in the one play drive. Pike to Bins. 10 7 Bearcats. Just want to say good luck to Tony and uh, we're proud of you. And 
Good luck tonight and keep making it happen, buddy. <laughs> that is Sonny Pike's dad, Steve, his mom, Sherry, and the Pike Posse. 15 of them in the RV. That's a fitting number for their son, quarterback number 15. A friend of Steve's got the RV. They can road trip every game this year, his senior year. I don't know about 15 in an RV from Ohio to Florida, but it's a long drive, isn't it? So much to get. They're going to make a week out of it. They're going to stay through the weekend. Oh, yeah, 90 degrees today. All you got to get is Chevy Chase driving, and you're in business. <laughs> you better be good friends. 15 people in an RV. <laughs> I don't care how big it is. <laughs> Pike contingent happy. Your son putting the Bearcats up 10 7 with a little three yard pass. And this is Bogan taking a knee. Home of the Bulls and the Bucks here in Tampa. Lean times for the pro franchise this year, but back in Super Bowl 37, our next guest uh, coached him to a victory. And John Gruden, you know, casually attired. He's just coming to a game, minding his own business here in Tampa. We drag him to the booth. Thanks for making time. Oh, I love college football, and what a great opportunity to come out and see two of the top teams in the country. And Sorry for being a little prejudiced here, man, but <laughs> yeah, you can do that. It's allowed to Tampa. Right. It's really right. proud of Coach Levitt and what he's done here in Tampa, and we need this game bad. Isn't it amazing how far he's brought this program in such a short period of time? You have no idea. You have to have lived here and seen where the program started and where it is tonight, and it's thrilling to be a part of this. Look at the crowd, the atmosphere. It's tremendous. Daniels hands off on first down. This is Mike Ford for a short game. Now, when you watch this game, do you watch it from the perspective of you know eyeballing guys for the next level there's 25 scouts here tonight John. Well obviously the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bearcats Pike is well documented he's he's a blue chipper and I wanted to see him live in action. You can only see so much on TV in spite of the great job you guys do but I want to see Pike throw the ball and I really want to see the USF Bulls against the top 10 team here at home. Second and seven. Busby the tight end goes in motion. Daniels hands it off straight ahead and Ford fights for about three. Coach, you've, you've coached a lot of great quarterbacks in the National Football League. What are your impressions of the freshman B.J. Daniels? He's only played now in two starts, but what do you think? Well, what he did in Tallahassee really made an impression on me. He showed tremendous poise. You see the athletic ability. He's getting better. He made a bad decision earlier in the game. It's going to be interesting to see how he handles it in the third and fourth quarter against a caliber opponent like the Cincinnati Bearcats. Stats didn't look great against the Dolls, except he had some big plays and also had a 100 yard rushing game. They need two yards on this third down. And out of the eye formation, Ford. Some tough running, but the Bearcats stack him up. He didn't get it. I've enjoyed listening to, to Mike and, and Jaws and you talk about the Wildcat formation, the Dolphin game, and it. Tell Jaws it's worked in college for about 80 years. It, it, it can work in the right situation in the NFL. I, I appreciate you fighting that fight. I'm trying to tell them what goes around comes around. Not very many colleges even take a direct quarterback center exchange anymore. The Wildcat is rocking in the National Football League. Jaworski wears those long sleeve shirts. He's one of those old time <laughs> quarterbacks. He's a little sensitive. But he just didn't want to accept it, man. You can do it. If you got the personnel, why not go with it? Exactly right. And people in this country understand it. And it's become familiar with a lot of high schools as well. Alvarado to punt it away. This is a good boot. Drives Gilliard back, and he makes a fair catch at the 16. Fair catch take over and at the 16 yard line. And Pike flips it to Ramsey out of the backfield, and he's hauled down at the 20. I understand you're able to watch your son, who's a young guy playing high school football. One of the benefits of not being on the sidelines, John, you get to see a lot of your kid playing. And he's like, He's not the not the biggest guy in the world, but Anderson, he's all over the field. No, he's a little Terminator, though. He's <laughs> doing a great job, and we're having a lot of fun. And you guys know high school football in Ohio is special. High school football down here in Florida, we're really mm -hmm. proud of it. He's off to a good start in his career. I told you go to most, if not all, the practices. <laughs> yeah, I help whenever I can. Oh, okay. Play action fake. Fight pressure. Loses the ball. Falls on it inside the 10. Finally, that Bulls speedy pass rush makes its presence felt. There's George Selby. We talked about him coming into this game. He was going to get isolated on the edge. And right now, he's taking advantage of those one-on-one -on -one matchups. Yeah, Jeff Linkenbach, you know, he's the best player out here. And he's got that one-on-one -on -one assignment. And if you don't get rid of the football on time against George Selby, he's going to get to the football. John, you know, they love the edge pass rushers in the NFL. A lot of scouts are interested to see how Selby's skills might translate. Selby's going to play on Monday night, guys. <laughs> Trust me. Week in, week out, he's dominant in these situations. 
Here comes the noise on third and 17. Some stunning. And Pike has to dodge a man in the end zone. Fires downfield and delivers to Woods. Did he make the catch on the sidelines? Yes. Wow. What a throw on the run from Pike and a first down at the 34 as he got away from Selby. Now, see, from my standpoint up here, I, I'm about to say he's not athletic enough to break the pocket and make that throw from the left side. I'm wrong. For six foot six, he is a lot more mobile than you think. And how about that? Rolling to his left, getting his shoulders squared, putting the football the only place his guy can make the catch. And Selby standing up on the edge. Pike able to neutralize the pressure with the fake and there's a short completion to Ramsey. Craig, how about that? You just circled George Selby coming off the edge. The play call, throwing the screen pass to the vacated area with that speed and the ears pinned back. Yeah, what are, you, what are they looking to do there with that, John? Slow him down. Try to get him off feet. You know, Selby, he's got a beat on his snap count. You can see that from up here. And the best way to slow him down is vary the snap count, run a draw, run a screen. The majority, majority of the snaps this year, he's been double or triple teamed. They're, they're trying to do less of that tonight. They think Lincoln Buck can handle him. Right. Dumps it off short. Gilliard has first down yardage at the 36. Kayvon Webster, the true freshman, stopped him. Well, we asked George Selvey how he did against Lincoln Bach last year, and he said, to be honest, he got the best of me. So here they are, isolated man to man. This is the closest thing to an NFL tackle George Selvey's going to see. Lincoln Bach, 6'6, 310. It's about as close as you'll get to on Sunday. I thought Lincoln Bach did a nice job there. He got his butt back down after he started to have a little leverage underneath him. Sandusky, Ohio guy. They bring pressure, but it's a screen again to Killyard. Good call for the defense, and Gilliard in the clear inside the 10, first and goal. Chris Robinson, the linebacker, saved the touchdown, but he got 22 yards. Uh, you know what, Lincoln Bach this time here, get the ball out there in Gilliard's hands like that. Instead of having to stay in the dirt box and fight Selby, he gets to go out and play with the little guys on the corner. Left tackle pushes him in, goes to the open playground. It's a great play call with the rollout to the right, getting that defense's attention away from Gilliard. Pike changing the play. Five on the play clock. Just got it off. Fires into traffic. Incomplete. Tried to fit it into Gaduli. See USF defensively here down in the red zone playing a match concept. It's like seven across, trying to keep everything in front of them. It'd be really difficult to find routes and passing windows in those defenses. Uh, uh, it's pretty hard to do that, throw the football when your offense has minus one yard rushing tonight, right, John? They have not had a back in the backfield very often either. They're putting the game in Pike's hands. That's what this country wants to see. I'm excited to see the finish of this draft. And second and goal. Pike fires across the middle and a diving catch for a touchdown by Armand Bins. <laughs> so some tremendous plays by Pike's wide receivers on this drive. And they extend the lead. Even without the threat of a running game, the throw to the back leading, I mean, this is drilled. That's a great fingertip catch by Bins. It's the advantage of being a six foot six quarterback. You can see over top of all that, really make a nice drive throw. John, you said you wanted to see the payoff of this drive. It was a good looking throw by Pike. And, and now the young quarterback is going to face a, a 10 point deficit in a big hyped game. That's something he hasn't faced before, Daniels. Well, this is a place that Daniels has not been before. Yep. And Cincinnati plays defense. Everybody talks about Pike, but not a lot of people talk about this Bearcat defense. They've done a great job as a football team finding ways to win. This will be an excellent second half. Did that drive and pressure of Tony Pike right there? That impressed me, man. But if you're a receiver, a prospect, a high school kid, why wouldn't you want to go play for the Bearcats and have that guy throw you the rock? He is impressive. Wait a minute, you got a green jersey on here. I know it, but uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, man, that guy's impressive. The receivers know you go where the quarterbacks go. That's what yeah. it follows in recruiting. Hey, John, you're a good sport to join us, man. Just here as a fan, and steps into the booth. Keep up the great work on Monday night. I got a lot of respect for you guys. I love good watching job. you. Good luck. Fellas. Appreciate you that. Too. Good Great to job. see you.
John Jaws, Mike Tirico in San Diego Monday as the Broncos try to stay perfect. You got you to gotta really settle down now. Play within the system. Again, we've talked about it all night. You don't have to get it all back here before the half is over. There's a lot of football to be played. Rodgers boots it. It's taken by Bogan. And he's dragged out inside the 20s. Daniels fires across the middle. This is Hester. And the touchdown catch earlier. Andre Revel stops him after about eight yards. And there's the route, Craig. We've been talking about all night that's been wide open. And a nice job by B.J. Daniels. They're just taking it right now. There's no hesitation. Will they be aggressive with the young quarterback? Down 10 here. That, that right there is how you do it. Don't, don't force it. Don't push it. Work your way down the field. Bulls have two timeouts to work with. Daniels. Trying to buy time. Fires along the sidelines, and again, it's Hester, first down yardage. USF understands that Cincinnati's MO on defense is to keep everything in front of them. So we talked about how B.J. Daniels earlier likes to take shots downfield. He just has to understand the simplicities and how to move the football. And especially defensive coordinator Bob Yako. He knows that he's got a freshman quarterback over there. He's not going to take any chances here. He's going to let him mess up, if he will. Yako's kind of cautious by nature. Not a big blitz guy. Since he rushes for Daniels. Trying to buy some time. Has a chance to run. Pump breaks. That takes off. Stop at the 45. It's a first down. Block will stop momentarily. He got 14 yards. The good news is it's a first down. The bad news is that play took about 15 to 20 seconds running around like that. I'll spike it. So 29 seconds before halftime. And if you're Cincinnati, your quarterback's in the locker room, so if you get a turnover, what do you do? You get your timeout still in your pocket. Well, it, you, you go to somebody besides Pike. I don't, I don't think you can get out there that fast. So I'd be thinking about that. If you're USF, man, don't worry about making a mistake because what are they going to do with it if you give it to them? USF is looking at getting this football at least within the 30-yard line for a, a, a chance at a field goal. And not a real good chance based on the field goal kicking we've seen this year from the team. Daniels again taking time, lobs it over the middle. It's a completion to Planter. He has first down yardage inside the 35. So again, they'll need to spike this. Daniels retrieves the mouthpiece. And the clock stops with 19 to go. How about B.J. Daniels running up, <laughs> pushing his offensive linemen in the back, trying to get them set so they can the lose the football. <laughs> One or the other. We're watching again at a freshman quarterback, an execution of the two-minute drill, doing an outstanding job of getting his team down with a chance. Poise. That's one thing we've always talked about with him tonight. He does show good poise. You see him here. Get down. We're going to clock it. My mouthpiece is gone. Line up. Line up. <laughs> diving catch but the clock will continue to run the short completion to Richardson didn't get a first down one fake by Daniels clock ticking as he fires to the corner and way way over the head of Bogan so four seconds to go and now we'll just have to give it a shot here at least he got him down to where he can give them a shot right they had a better shot <laughs> two plays ago and that illegal shift took him out of it. Yeah, now now Eric Schwartz will, will take his turn at a 50-yard field goal. That's the same distance that Alvarado missed badly from earlier. Gives it a ride. Gets it. They may have found the kicker. And they have drawn within one touchdown as the first half expires. Good looking drive by Daniels to get back within seven. You know what? This is an outstanding kick, and he got it off in time with one, two. Beautiful job. Not hitting the line drive and taking too long on the approach. So Eric Schwartz makes it a seven-point game as we check with Aaron and Brian Kelly. Chris, thanks. Coach, I know he was Tony was over on the sidelines very briefly. What do you know about his injury? Uh, you know, we got our medical doctors are taking a look at him. Uh, they'll they'll uh, X-ray him. We'll have more information when we get him out. 
what was the injury? Uh, I think he landed on the same arm that it broke before. So we got to take an x-ray, see what, see what it looks like. So that's the non-throwing arm. What would it take for this kid not to come back in the second half of this important game, though? Well, he broke his arm. He's not playing in the second half. Thank you. Momentarily, Coach. All right, so concern for Kelly, and now a seven-point lead after the first half. Reese, Mark Lou, the IBM halftime report. Reese, take it away. First half dominated statistically by USF. Total yards, 256 to just 132 for Cincinnati, but Aaron Webster's 82-yard interception return setting up the three-yard touchdown pass. Tony Pike has a pair of them, and the good news is the quarterback for Cincinnati is back out there with a wrap on his left arm, but looks to be okay. It's the offensive line and the running game that's got to pick it up for Cincinnati. They had four yards rushing in the first half, so they've got to. That's how you protect Tony Pike in the second half. If you're US, if you're USF on defense, you're feeling pretty good right now. You've really only given up one drive for a score. The other touchdown they gave up came off the tail end of that interception. Chris was just talking about earlier. You cannot question Tony Pike's toughness if he comes back in this game and is ready to go. Brian Kelly told Aaron before the break that X-ray it and get a further report from Aaron in just a second. Bogan will just down this, and Daniels will take over at the 20-yard line. Aaron, what have you learned about the, uh, the arm? Well, I did learn that the x-rays were negative. It is a sprained left wrist. As you guys can see, he is wearing a padded sleeve over that wrist. Uh, they did, you know, have him kind of warm up a little bit in the locker room to see if he was ready to go. Coach Brian Kelly said he feels comfortable with him out there, and you know his backup is Zach Caleros. Coach Kelly also told me if he has to come in, Caleros is comfortable with what the offense is doing. Chris. He is, Aaron, but he's only you know six of eleven this season. Pike, of course, has those six screws in that left arm. Played with a hard cast a year ago for a number of games, including the win over USF on that Thursday night. So Plancher, first play of the second half, will be dropped for a loss. A little bit of a comparison. It was a more substantial hard cast last year in the left. Well, and last year, Tony Pike played a lot of his offense in the shotgun like they're doing this year. So ball handling wise, it shouldn't be so, so different. For I think him. it's in his head, don't you? I yeah. mean, you know, you got you, he was used to the cast last year, took the snap with one hand. So it, to me right now, Tony Pike has to get his head right if he's going to play. Play action. Daniels rolling. Nice time and takes a shot downfield to Mitchell. Jump ball incomplete. Mitchell went up with Aaron Webster, who had that big game changing pick in the first half. Talking about this quarterback, DJ Daniels, the freshman again. I'm not sure, Jesse, why do that? You know, you've, it's second down, pick up some yardage to make it manageable on third. It's a rollout to the left. The play is designed to either throw a hitch or a corner throw. Then again, though, you see the, the undisciplined play sometimes of a young freshman looking back to a receiver that really has no business catching that football. You wonder if Carl Mitchell, though, still could have done a better job bringing that in. You gotta make that catch, don't you? I think so. Ball went 60 yards in the air. Mitchell, he's a big play guy. He's had four catches this year of 50 plus. They need 12 on third down, and Daniels, once again, long time, fires downfield. And overthrew the intended receiver, Sterling Griffin, the true freshman. So not a great deal of patience in the opening drive. Took his shots. Nobody will question B. Day Daniels' athleticism, but this is something we're going to keep talking about in the second half, Craig. He has to settle down and just take what the defense gives him. Well, management's something that quarterbacks have to learn as they go along and understand that the opponent over there has a quarterback that might not be ready to come back on the field too. So just play the game, understand it. Gilliard will try to give Bearcats some good field position. And a real good punt. And the Bearcats made at the 45-yard line. Sarah, what's the latest on Pike? Well, they're saying it's still spraying. They're going to reevaluate reevaluate him, hello, in about five minutes. But, guys, I just watched him talk to his offensive line, and he said, protect Zach. He can win this without me. So Tony Pike in a lot of pain. They did try to rewrap it. They put ice on top of it. So I think he's going to go back to the locker room and get it checked out again. All right. Meanwhile, here is Kolaris. As Pike has he's got a lot of ice under that. That is not a good sign. A seven point lead. Polaris trying to just get out of Tampa and hope their quarterback Pike is is OK for the long haul. They had not been able to run the ball all night. This is Isaiah Pede and he is hammered. Huge hit delivered by 
the Haitian sensation Pierre Paul. Known as a pass rusher, but a pretty good blow in the ball carrier there. And that's one of the few times tonight we've seen Cincinnati's quarterback under the center. And then he has similar to a running game. That's just. Well, you're going to see this offense look a lot different without Tony Pike, but how about the job <laughs> oh. coming on down the line of scrimmage from the back side, pursuing the play? They fake it to Pede. Dolores and a scamper forward. He'll be dropped at the line of scrimmage by Pierre Paul again. Guy who played only two years of high school football, a basketball player, his parents coming to Florida from Haiti. USF's defense right now smells blood in the water. Zach Caleros enters the game a little bit rattled. His offensive game plan changes, and USF's going to pin their ears back. You know who pinned their ears back? It's this crowd. The crowd, along with that defense, they felt it. It's the first time tonight that they've really been into this football game. A lot of those numbers you saw from Caleros accumulated in a blowout of Southeast Missouri State. And this is not Southeast Missouri State. There's a design run and Calaris breaking free for a first down and Zach Calaris in a foot race. How's that for a backup quarterback stepping up and stepping 75 yards to the end zone. Are you kidding me. <laughs> exactly. Hey, here they come up the field. What a job by Brian Kelly. Design quarterback play. Get the ends up the field and take advantage of their over pursuit. Zach Caleros is not six foot six. He's six feet. He plays on the baseball team. He's shifty. He's more athletic. And he shows you that on that monster <laughs> touchdown run. Great play call to take advantage of the backup skills. And what a shift in this game. The crowd revved up. Bulls looking to get the ball back. We expect this to be a quick strike offense. Amazingly, one out of every 11 plays for Cincy this year has been a 20 plus yard play. You just don't expect to get them like that. With Zach Claris in the game, I would have thought the pressure was on Cincinnati to stay ahead. Right now, down two possessions, the pressure's back on USF to get back in this thing. Yeah, you know, the pressure's on Joe Tracy, that defensive coordinator. He should have known that Zach Kolaris can run the football. Craig, I like what you said. There's a new dimension now on offense for Cincinnati. This might not be the pass-happy deal we've seen all season long. Mm -hmm. A lot more conventional runs. We've already seen this quarterback play under center. Mm -hmm. USF now has to try to forget a lot of things they've been working on the last two weeks because they had a bye. Yeah. they got to refocus. And with a 14-point lead, you can rethink the way you want to attack that defense and be a little more conservative. That's a tough play to bounce back from again. He had played very well as a defense all night, as well as you could expect against an explosive offense like the Bearcats. Now Daniels will go back to work down 14. Bogan dancing across the 25 yard line. Jesse Hester is back in this game. He had left. Be checked out for that hamstring injury. He's in a slot. Daniels takes a look there and now fires it over Hester's head. He was free. He had a linebacker on him to throw too high. There have been very few pay plays here recently where, you, where it's been conventional for USF. It, it, it seems like every pass play is a Sandlot Madden scramble play. And, and you know what? And even that route that was run there was an option route with a linebacker of which tonight they've been going to the inside and it's been open. He went out that time, turned outside. I don't know, it was not con it was not concerted, not together. I think at some point here USF has to start making conventional throws. Get the snap, find a receiver, dot him, and gain some consistency. On third and six, Daniel stands in and delivers, but again, a little bit high, and Hester couldn't come up with it. Again, he was covered by the linebacker Revels who was giving chase, but that was a, a makeable throw and catch, and here comes another punt. Well, we heard at halftime from USF personnel that Hester had cramps, and he's not been playing, so he's not in condition, and he drops the ball there. His hit's just not in the game. Bob Diaco's defense for Cincinnati, though, looking pretty in control so far in the second half. Yeah, they just have one first down in this quarter, the Bulls, and that was on that 32-yard pass to Bogan. Marty Gilliard is sort of overdue to make a play in this game as the returner but again just has to call fair catch 
at the 34 yard line. Inside of two and a half in the third quarter. See Daniel struggles after halftime. No doubt about that. They fake it to Ramsey. Polaris has it ball knocked out of his hand and it's intercepted by Nate Allen. And the playmaking safety for the Bulls does it again. Jason Pierre Paul got to the quarterback, forced the bad throw, and Levitt jumps out in the field to try to get his guys going. You see Brian Kelly telling him, that's not what I want you to do. I want you to throw this football to the outside. Bolero's trying to throw this underneath, it looks like. Pierre Paul knocking the ball out of his hand. And, and you know what? This here is Caleros is locked in on his receiver and didn't respect or understand the athleticism of Pierre Paul. And that, that <laughs> that's not what I wanted you to do. That's, those were the words, right? That's what he said. That's not what I wanted you to do. Does a coach ever want his quarterback to throw an interception? <laughs> <laughs> Allen, leading tackler on this team. His third pick of the year sets up the Bulls of the 24. Daniels takes off. Gets a block. B.J. Daniels inside the 10. Barrels near the goal line. He's just short. And this game, which has seen a couple of quick momentum shifts, might be seeing another one right here. Uh, as a runner, I want you to watch the cuts that Daniels makes. How when he makes the cut, it's a hard, dramatic cut, right? He's breaking some ankles back He there. is. There's a lot of turned ankles on that team that you, you see. <laughs> this is Ford at 225 pounds. The back of the eye formation. But Daniels dives forward on a sneak. No signal. Now they signal touchdown. We got a ball game now, final minute of the third quarter. It was a pick for Cincy that shifted momentum in the first half. And now Webster you know, did that job. Allen does his job for the Bulls. Just a good surge up front by the USF offensive line. BJ Daniels, though, showing that great versatility and his running ability to set that touchdown up. Boy, Levitt had been hoping for that turnover. The defense had come close. A couple of potential interceptions dropped. Finally, Pierre Paul making the big play. Allen, the easy pick, and a one-score game all of a sudden. Big East one of three conferences with two undefeated teams. I love you, Craig. It's a little early. I mean, we don't even know who's going to win this game tonight. You want to talk about who's going to be standing there and <laughs> we promoted December it in the front, 5th? We no, I know. We'll get I mean, back to it. No, we'll get back to that. It's worth it. It's worth the conversation. You heard the, the guys in the studio talk about it. I think there's a lot of fans that are kind of jumping off their couch saying, what are you talking about, Big East team playing for the national title? This is Gilliard. Can he change momentum with a big return? Stopped at the 32. And this is Isaiah Pede back in the game to the left of Polaris. And seven in the box for the Bulls. Polaris keeps it, finds a crease. He shows his shiftiness. Nice. 10-yard gain. There were nine players close to the box on that play, but again, it shows you, even though the numbers aren't necessarily with you, if you're surging up front, you got a mobile quarterback, you can have success. And another thing to watch on that USF defensive front is that there might be crowded up there, but they're not pinned back. They're not as aggressive. They have to respect the whole field now. Keep this in mind, too. USF not very big up front on the defensive line. Seconds ticking down. Four fingers in the air for Levitt's team. Got to get the ball back. They've been a very good fourth quarter team. But Cincinnati with the ball sitting on a seven point lead with 15 to go. The SunTrust Financial Building, downtown Tampa, lit up in Bulls green and gold as the whole city gets behind this college team. A statement game, the Bulls said. And Cincinnati trying to protect a, a seven point lead as we begin the fourth quarter. Both sides using quarterbacks that figure to be backups this year. Zach Polaris, after the interception, set up the Bulls touchdown, nursing a seven-point lead and handing off up the middle to Isaiah Peed, and he dives into Bulls territory in an offense that couldn't run a lick in the first half, finding some creases. Chris, you just mentioned that it's, it's really a small play box, but there are only six. You've only got six in there in the box. 
and, and you're going to run the football. And you have to expect that USF knows that. Uncharted waters also, Craig, for Cincinnati here playing keep away and close to the vest rather than quick strike that they're used to playing. Yeah, it's the last thing from a ball control offense, isn't it? Absolutely. Polaris will throw downfield. Has a man wide open and in stride. It's Gadouli reaching for the end zone. There's a flag after the touchdown as Gadouli took off his hat. But we've seen Calaris with monster plays running and now throwing. What a job play calling by Brian Kelly. Right when you think they're never going to attempt to pass, he sets up this play, dials up for his wide open tight end, Ben Gadouli, and Zach Caleros has the poise and answers. Guy's just a winner. All he did in high school was win games. After further video of your review, the runner's elbow was down on the ground. Prior to the ball crossing the goal line plane. Therefore, the end of the run is the half yard line. The unsportsman line contact against number 19 is still in force. The 15 yard penalty will move the ball back to the 15 and a half. Yeah, that becomes huge. Uh, the kid made a great effort and reached for the goal line. About a half yard short and then lost his head, lost his helmet. And now they're back at the 15. So an enormous turn of events. Oops. But Joe Tracy, the defensive coordinator, now he's got back in his head that it's not going to be just a running game. So he has to play balanced on defense. He can't just pin his ears back in the box. If you know, I'm Joe Tracy, you wonder if he's now starting to guess a little bit. What are they going to do? Are they going to run with the quarterback, throw the football, run the football? They've been successful in all three areas with this backup quarterback in. Screen and dropped immediately as Peed. Jerome Murphy up to make the play. But we've seen a lot of calls this year, you know, unsportsmanlike conduct flags that just drive me crazy that I don't think are warranted. A lot of them in the SEC. This is automatic, though. You cannot take the helmet off. He was just a couple yards in the field of play, and you can see the immediate flag. It's it's automatic. Well, you see DJ Woods right away, the receiver going over to him and telling him, hey, can't do that. And it's too late. We'll see how large that looms. Would have been the first and goal at the half yard line. Claros fires for the end zone. And defending over there was Murphy on Bins. He's trying for the hat trick. Jerome Murphy has had back to back huge plays touchdown saving tackle the play before this is just a great job Craig matching up one on one against the taller receiver yeah, he sure did push off of him though did you see that we're both you know Murphy looks like he pushed him around the goal line knocked Ben's a little bit off of his rhythm but again Brian Kelly dialing up a pass into the end zone maybe content to go with just a three attempt Bulls rush just four. Galeras throws to the end zone again and a diving attempt for Ben's and here comes a flag Jerome Murphy said I didn't do anything. Officials apparently disagree. Oh, he did. There was a <laughs> lot of contact with Ben's running into the end zone. Cincinnati here trying to take advantage of a 6-4 receiver. Pass interference. Number 10. Defense. By rule of ball, we place at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. I, th I thought Murphy got away with it the last time. You can see they're down the field, turns his hips, Ben's is there, he pushes him again. Little shove out of bounds, so the crucial penalty backed up the Bearcats after the apparent touchdown, and now pass interference sets up Cincy first and goal at the two. And that's Jerome Murphy's third big, big penalty tonight for USF. You think Brian Kelly didn't sense it on the last time that he tried to cover Benz on the one-on-one -on -one back to the corner? Come he, back to it? I think he also senses that his wide receiver's four inches taller than that corner to give him a chance. Isaiah Pede to the right of Polaris. Well, 
Harris keeps it. Stretches. No signal yet. And short. Close to a touchdown. Keon Wilson and Mistral Raymond just able to stop him short. The line judge came flying in on that play and actually was signaling touchdown. Look it up. There kind of a half-hearted signal. <laughs> touchdown. And it is a touchdown. Another check. And another good call by Brian Kelly. A pretty safe call. Oh, that's a touchdown. Great job by the line judge. Wow. He had the angle. You could see this is exactly his vantage point that he was looking at. Huge touchdown. Bearcats back up by 14. And what a job by Zach Calaris, who holds. That's been his bigger role coming into this game as the holder. He's doing a great job filling in for Pike. Nice job holding on to the football here as well. Over in Ebor City, if you're a cigar aficionado, you can get yourself a hand rolled one. This guy's rolled 17,000 cigars what? at least in his life. Yeah. That's not his first rodeo. Tony Pike in street clothes. He's done for the night. And of course, the diagnosis of that left arm injury out of this game will be critical for Cincinnati fans. We'll have more info if we get a chance. But in the meantime, look what Zach Calaris has done. Pike played the first half, only had 150 total yards in just 17 plays. Thanks in large part to a 75 yard touchdown. And Calaris has put a buck 86 out there. Remember that well, the three of us met him last year on the football field with Tony Pike when the, neither one of them really were on the radar. Yeah. Before the game with USF up in Cincinnati. This is Bogan. Rolls really need a spark, but they won't get one for this return. They're going to be dropped to the 15. Daniels fakes it to Ford, keeps it. And he hadn't pinned in. And he'll lose a couple. You know, we talked to Calaris. You know, last year he did come into some pressure situations. It, here's a guy that when Pike was injured with the arm had to come in against Akron. They're in a battle at Akron early in the year. Made a big run, set up a game-winning field goal. Later played against Louisville when Pike couldn't get under center and, and take snaps. So he, he's played some pressure snaps. Not quite like this, not for this length of time. He's been asked to manage games before when they've been up. But when you think about managing games as a quarterback, you think about running the football, milking the clock, short completions. Zach Caleros has come into this game and had big plays. None bigger than the 75-yard touchdown run, but he's made some throws too, Craig. I thought he stunned that USF defense on this play right here. Those defensive ends, we'd highlighted them. They went right up the field. Great call. And then the throw down the field. When we thought in the previous series, he just threw on an interception. So he didn't go on a shell. He didn't cramp up. Had some poise, composure. His teammates all over him. I mean, that's... Second and 12. Byers downfield and has a man called to Mitchell wide open. Oh. And he couldn't get it. <laughs> a huge drop trying to cut this 14 point lead in half and that was right in stride. He answered your question Fowler. Can he make a play with a pass? He could but his receiver Mitchell couldn't finish it off. How about 55 yards in the air rolling right by, by the, the quarterback. Unbelievable arm strength and Carlton Mitchell just eased up and he relaxed at the last second. He knew he was behind the secondary took his eyes off the football instead of securing the catch. He's still running if he catches that football. Third down after the deflating drop. Daniels and it just runs out of bounds. That won't help. Bulls had a chance. See BJ Daniels here showing his frustration. A lot of football time left in this game now. 12 and a half minutes. Yes, you're down two possessions. You're going to have to make some big throws coming up here. Don't get down on your yeah. guys yet. Yeah, and, it's, and, and number two, Mitchell's got to get his head up and make a play before the game's over. Visited with both those guys that were sitting side by side. They're good buddies, and you know Mitchell is his best receiver out there. Held to just you know, two catches tonight. Billiard delayed fair catch at the 32, and now the Bulls defense has to try to get the ball back quickly. Starting defensive end, Carter Matthews, taking off the field. And the Bearcats go back to work. Jacob Ramsey. Yeah. 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 
it's funny, you know, this situation really plays into Cincinnati's hand. Obviously, they're up, but USF has a great pass defense because they're fast up front. They're not big. I don't know if they're built to stuff the run. They stuffed it in the first half because Haley didn't make much of an effort to try to run the ball. And out of necessity in the second half, a whole different story. Calaris on the keeper. He's got a first down. Now move the chains. Work the clock. So, so as we watch this game uh, in the fourth quarter here, Cincinnati, the question will become: If Pike can't play, can Cincinnati stay in the game and, and stay there and win the rest of the way out? They did it last year with again with four different quarterbacks playing. So Brian Kelly has a track record of just inserting different guys in a quarterback and winning games. He's proved he can do it. Now they, they didn't go through it undefeated though. They did lose at UConn last year. Laris grabbed the high snap and dashes up the middle for about nine. Ball comes loose. Bulls say they have it. Signal is Cincinnati ball. Just about to say that USF's defense this season has done a great job of stripping ball carriers. So if you're out on offense right now, you have to be mindful of that. You know they've been told that, Jesse, this week. Hey, you better have two hands on the ball in the middle of the field. They're strippers. Yeah, you're right. USF defensive coordinator Joe Tracy said they work on stripping drills throughout the week in practice. 16 turnovers they forced coming into this game. Tied for third in the nation. Right now, you're right. Cincinnati has to be very mindful of taking care of the football. And they do that well. They haven't lost a fumble this year. Only three turnovers coming in were, were picks. Not a cleanly handled shotgun snap by Calaris, and Ramsey's dropped for a loss. Timing in that play ruined. Now, when you talk about the schedule and the challenge in front of Cincinnati going forward, go ahead, Chris. Well, you, you know. Week from Saturday, Louisville at home. There will be a comfortable favorite at Syracuse. And then it gets interesting here with Connecticut and West Virginia. But again, the games are in Cincinnati. Nothing to say these two teams right here can't be ranked in the very near future. We've seen West Virginia. We all agree they're a good team. Craig, you just saw I was, Pittsburgh. Right I think bad. Pitt's a good football. I had Pitt in my top 25 ballot this week. I think they're a good football team. I want to ask you, though, if they navigate that schedule, if they're 12-0, we'll circle back and... You know, See if they pass the eyeball test for people around the country who vote in the polls. Whereas takes off, first down. Look at that shifty guy. Doesn't look like he's moving forward that quickly, but the change of direction is weaving through the secondary. Zach Caleros in the second half has 120 yards rushing. He, he's just natural. He sees the scenes. And, and he's fresh, right? He's <laughs> fresh against the defense that's been out there the whole game. And they're getting bunched up, hands on their hips. They're tired over there. But you, you've got to be disciplined against a running quarterback with that zone read, and it becomes assignment football. Well, yeah, that's just four fun. rushing yards in the first half when Pike was in there. Adjusted the play calling in a monster second half running the ball with Polaris. Again, 75 yards in that one touchdown run. He is dropped for a loss by Pierre Paul. What, what, what did you ask now the, the, the voters around the country? If yeah, you know, this is a showcase game. It's not just whether you win. It's how you look while you win. It's just Cincinnati, unlike perhaps for many voters, Boise State last night looked like a top 10 team to you. I think Cincinnati right now, it certainly does. Yeah. I think it's more impressive almost that Tony Pike's not playing. Absolutely. And they're looking like this. I mean, they were winning when Pike went out of the game. They've maintained and built. So... I have I think it's a sense of urgency the whole football team adopted. I admire them for coming on the road beating a good football team. They didn't quite close the deal yet, but they're up by 14 points on second and 15. Calaris again. He's corralled after about a four-yard gain. Cincinnati has done a nice job on this drive, chewing up a lot of clock. They've taken their time getting to the line of scrimmage. They're milking the play clock. Trying to take as much time out of this game, deflate this game, to really limit South Florida's ability to come back. But to keep it in perspective for South Florida, they are playing the number eight team in the country. They're at home. I know, I understand that, but they have B.J. Daniels, a freshman quarterback. They have a talented football team. They've got a lot of season left in front of them, too. You're saying there's, there's no reason to implode like they have in recent years after their first loss. And we'll see if they can't come back. How they respond. Gilliard on the screen. Gilliard has been kind of contained tonight. It's been 
other guys and the very different looking Cincinnati offense that's done the damage. I like the way that they get him the football, though. You know, it's a safe bet. You know he's going to catch it. He's going to hold on to it more than likely. It says something about the versatility of this offense, too. I, you know, I thought for sure they were a team. We knew they could throw it, dink and dunk it, beat you that way. But they're proving tonight they can pound it out on the ground. No clock. Beat you that way, too. This is a very versatile offense. Field goal attempt to 29 yards by Rodgers. Again, seldom used this year. Knocks that one through. So Cincinnati makes it a 17 point lead. 629 to play. Big build up here in Tampa. The Bulls trying to dodge another disappointment. 5 and 0 for the third straight season. Only team in 1A that can say that. I don't know if you realize that, but again, the problems coming after the 5 and 0 start, beaten by a football team in Cincinnati that is trying to confirm its top 10 ranking tonight. You know, they were actually ranked ahead of Ohio State last week's poll. Buckeyes with the big win over Wisconsin jumped back over them. But there's a conversation in that state. I, I think Cincinnati and Ohio State should play. They need to play every year. Nobody needs to see the Buckeyes play Youngstown State and Toledo and those people. Be a good rivalry in the state. As Theo Wilson tries to create something on the kickoff return and is dragged down to the 25. Feature. There's the freshman Lamar taking off. They've tried all night to get this fast little guy touches, and that's the first time he's been able to break free. He's a guy they want to get more involved, get some speed on the field in the tailback position. Levitt's got a sell job to do. He's going to have to look his guys in the eyes, and, and the Bulls, it's just talk until they come out and prove that they can bounce back and show some resilience and not have the swoon that, frankly, a lot of folks in this town will expect now. Daniel's still playing hard, ahead for nine. A little of the negative for USF losing to Cincinnati is the perception that Cincinnati is not that good around here. I'm not sure people down here really understand exactly how good Cincinnati is. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great call, Craig. I'm really excited now to watch USF bounce back and play at Pitt next week. Find out what this team is made of. Underthrown, looking for Mitchell, who had that opportunity to perhaps change around this game. Wide open, deep, dropped it. Had he found the end zone, would have been a seven point game. Yep. They'll go back and watch this tape and feel like they gave the game away. They, they, I bet they come out and don't say they were beaten, they'll say they beat themselves. They got a point, 11 penalties. Just the one turnover, but the drops and the mental errors, the missed opportunities to make interceptions, and so on. Low throw, it's caught at 25. Mm. Bogan. Mm. And for Cincinnati, a stepping stone game. Mission accomplished. A huge hurdle cleared in the Big East. And a schedule that seems to be kinder going forward if they can manage the role of being big favorites. Daniels fires over the middle for the end zone and a sliding interception. Wasn't a receiver in the vicinity. An easy pick for Drew Fry, the freshman safety. This has been impressive for Brian Kelly in Cincinnati tonight because we talked a little bit about it. They took care of business. They beat a ranked opponent, conference opponent, on the road again, but they've passed the eyeball test. And, and they'll continue to pass the test as long as their defense plays well. Drew Fry in that back in that back in that secondary, you know, is absolutely uh, important to this football team. If they can play defense, that will help their offense, and especially they have to go with Zach Kolaris. I, I really look forward to watching Cincinnati's offense as it develops if, if indeed, Kolaris is the quarterback and Pike is out. And nothing, we don't know yeah, a we don't diagnosis. Know I mean, yeah. I, it didn't look like it's a season-ending injury for Pike, certainly a guy who's you know, played with a with a cast on his hand I, last uh, year. But it didn't like he could handle, he didn't like he'd have any uh, strength in that hand. And they x-rayed it once at halftime. The x-ray was negative, and he came back out for one series and got knocked around. Brought him back in to evaluate it. And at that point, Calaris was making plays. He said, fine, sit the big fellow down. How about a grade for Brian Kelly tonight? 
A plus. A plus. Coaching job, A unbelievable. Plus. And for the defense. I mean, this whole team, a good job by Cincinnati going on the road, losing their starting quarterback and the figurehead for their football team. We were talking about Pike being a Heisman candidate before the game. And they still won on the road. Yeah, he's not worried about individual awards right now. I'll check that risk back home in Cincinnati. In the meantime, Zach Claris does what backup quarterbacks are expected to do by their coaches, but the rest of us are, are still surprised when it happens. Comes in and plays brilliantly. He managed the football game. You expect that, but not the way he did it. He went out and made monster plays when they were ahead, not just ice this game, but actually extended the lead. So Cincinnati goes back home, 6 and 0. Games with Louisville, Syracuse, Connecticut, West Virginia, Illinois, and Pittsburgh ahead as they begin to count down to a potential perfect season and a role in the conversation with the title contenders. Zach Kolaris, our player of the game, is with Aaron Andrews. And I have head coach Brian Kelly as well. I'll start with coach. He's seen limited time before. I mean, coming out of the half, you said we'll be fine with him. But in your mind, what was key for him tonight in managing this game? Uh, well, he's a confident young man, and he's a winner. And uh, he just waits for his opportunity like most of our guys. And now we got to ride him. we got Tony out for a period of time, so Zach's going to have to do the job. Right, Zach? All right, buddy. Right, Zach. With the Tony Pike, what kind of an up update do you have on his injury? Uh, we'll know a little bit more, but it doesn't look good. Uh, so we just got to keep battling, keep playing. Uh, unfortunately, this is un this is familiar territory yeah. for us, but we'll keep battling. We'll, we'll battle like we did tonight. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Zach, let me ask you, you get the call to come in tonight when you see Tony come down. What are you thinking? Well, I was actually standing on the sideline. I thought they just wanted me to round the clock in the second half. I wasn't even aware he was hurt, to be honest with you, and I got in the locker room they said you might have to go in so I don't know I'm confident you know yeah I learned a lot from Tony and you know getting the weight getting the uh, film room so I was confident well then tell us what's going through your mind when you are running 75 yards for that touchdown yeah you're confident but come on we're how much excited were you I was I was honestly thinking about Ben Mock when he ran that one against Pitt and got caught I didn't want to I didn't want to do that I didn't want to get caught I almost fell at the end so Oh, yeah, I still want to get caught. In your mind, what was key for you in managing the game the way you did with such limited experience? You know, just not turning the ball over. I threw that interception, which was unfortunate, but, uh, you know, just managing the game. We got great players, so just get, get the ball in uh, playmakers' hands. Go celebrate with your teammates. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Chris. Aaron, thank you. I guess the sophomore may have to be the quarterback. The diagnosis, it seemed that Kelly was hinting at something serious for Tony Pike, which is too bad on his senior Interesting season. Interesting thing what Brian Kelly said, though, not unfamiliar territory. They've gone through this before. Brian Kelly knows how to handle this. I'm not doubting him one bit. I expect Cincinnati to show up and play another good football game. Very impressive second half for the Bearcats who survive 34-17. Now, SportsCenter is coming up next. Linda Cohn and Scott Van Pelt will have that. We'll be over on ESPN News with Post Game Extra. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Craig, and Jesse, and Aaron, and our entire crew here in Tampa, I'm Chris Fowler. So long for now, and stay tuned for SportsCenter.